What's going on everybody? Welcome into a new guide for Anno 1800. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at trade routes, passive and active trading, taking a look at the trade post itself and some of the options available there, and take a look at the trade statistics screen. So to find your trade route information, you're going to be clicking this button right here. It's the third button to the right underneath the mini map that says routes on it. This is your trade routes overview. If you have trade routes, you're going to see this screen right here that shows all of your routes. The information here is pretty self-explanatory. It shows the name of the route. The game auto names any routes that you don't give it a unique name to. It always gives it the name of the, the first item or the first good on the route. The, and the three letters of the first station on the route and the three letters of the last station on the route shows you everything that's being traded on that one, how many ships are assigned to it, and if any of those ships are currently paused. And you can also delete a route. Your charter routes show up at the top. Your, man, your trade routes and your oil routes are all lumped in down here together. Over here you have the region screen where you can just take a look at who owns every island if you have trade rights with them and the location of all the different ships on the map. So you can go through each region over here. If you have not created any trade routes, you're going to see this screen right here asking you to create your first one. There are trade routes, charter routes, and oil routes. Oil routes are a very simple route and everything where you need an oil tanker. Unfortunately, apparently I don't have one. I thought I did, but I don't have an oil tanker right now. So if you have an oil tanker, it's going to show up right here. You're going to assign it. And then you have to use an island with an oil harbor. As you can see, I don't have one here, but I've got one here. So you're going to tell it to go from one island to another island with an oil harbor and pick up oil. Oil tankers can hold a maximum of 400 oil per tanker, and that is it. They cannot hold any more than that. And you're going to tell it to unload. And you can use as many islands as you want on the route. The only uh, thing about that is, is if you decide to use multiple routes, just be sure that you go in and adjust the amount of oil being unloaded at the at the locations other than the last one so you always have something left over at the last station that it's being dropped off at you are this is something i also always suggest doing is be sure that your final route unloads the maximum amount of for the for that good and everything for that cargo slot that way you empty out anything that's left over or attempt to empty out anything that's left over you hit accept and it adds that trade route to your list of active routes and the ships will get started on it. The next type of route is a very niche little route and it is the charter route. Charter routes can uh, take one good and one good only from one island to another island up to a maximum of 80. Cannot have any more than 80 and it does cost 50 maintenance and Five influence. You do get three charter routes for free that don't cost any influence. They still cost the 50, but they don't cost five influence for the first three. After that, they do cost five influence. Uh, it is a modified schooner that is very, very slow. You cannot, you have no control over that chartered ship. You can't do anything with it. You can't add items to it to make it faster or tell it to go anywhere else. It is just an AI ship that goes back and forth for you. Compared to a regular schooner that's only 15 maintenance, one influence, you can add an item to it, and it has a capacity of 100. Um, I find the schooners a little uh, more useful in that regard. The main benefit of a charter route is that if it gets destroyed by the pirates or an enemy you're at war with, the charter route does get replaced instantly for free. You don't have to build another ship. So that are those are charter routes. The last type of route is the uh, b your basic charter routes. Oh, not charter routes, trade routes. Sorry about that, your actual trade routes. So to create your own trade route, you're going to want to add a ship. You can add a name or let the game auto name it for you. And you're gonna select a couple of, you're gonna select one or more islands. And you're gonna tell it what you want it to do. Let's say I need timber at La Ferte from Bat Hanover. And there you go, you're gonna hit accept and that route is going to get started and you're good to go. Now, let's say you also want to send over maybe some bricks to La Ferte from Bad Hanover. Okay, 
we're still very good. We're using two cargo slots. That's what these icons right here are. These are the actual cargo slots that are in your ship. As you can see, the schooner has two. Well, let's say I need to do something else. Let's say I need to send, I don't know, zinc over, copper over. Okay, well, now I have a problem now. I can't do this because I cannot carry more than two items from Bad Hanover to La Ferte. I'm going to have to either upgrade to a clipper, build a schooner, or use a charter route to, to start taking more goods from Bad Hanover to La Ferte. I cannot carry any more. But let's say I want to take something from La Ferte to Bad Hanover. Now I can do that. You can't do it over here because, again, that's the third slot. I can't use that third slot, but you can use one of the first two. Let's say I want to bring over hops from La Ferte to Bad Hanover. I can do this right here. This will work. Sort of. It will work as long as that timber is always unloaded and frees up that cargo slot. If it does not, and it doesn't unload all that timber, then it was never going to pick up the hops, and Bad Hanover is never going to get any hops. So how do you fix this? you got to use these buttons over here. There's a wait for goods, discard cargo, or wait to unload. Same thing right here. The wait for goods option is you're going to tell the ship to sit at the trading post or pier that it is currently docked at and wait for the full amount of goods that you want to be loaded up. Whether it's 50 or 15, it doesn't matter. The ship is going to sit there and wait until it has all of those goods loaded up before it leaves. The problem with doing that is that it will tie up the trading post or pier that it's sitting at until it has all of its goods loaded up. Uh, slow loading, slow to produce things like zinc or copper can take a little while to load up or to produce enough to load everything up. So your ship might be sitting there for a quite a while waiting for it. So I really don't ever recommend using the wait for goods option. It's um, you're tying up you're tying up valuable resources and time that your ship could just be going back and forth getting stuff. Uh, you're tying up piers and trading posts for other ships. They can't dock, so you're going to have to have more piers, which costs more money. It's just you know it, it's a it's it's compounding problem. I don't like to use the wait for goods. These two options over here though are are not too bad, especially the discard cargo, because this is what's going to help you. If you tell it to discard cargo, if it can't drop off all 50 timber, it's just going to dump the rest of it overboard into the water, free up that cargo slot so it can pick up the hops and bring them back to Bad Hanover. Now, Bad Hanover, you're going to want to do the same thing because if it can't drop off all the hops, you still need it. You still need this cargo slot now for the timber. So make sure you tell it to discard cargo and then it can free up that slot for the timber. Now, the other option you have is the wait to unload. You can't use both of these. You have to use one or the other. The wait to unload is, ba is the same as the wait for goods. You're going to tell the ship to sit where it's at, wait to unload the entire amount. Again, you're tying up the harbors and the piers where other ships can't use them, and you're delaying the trade route. You want your trade routes constantly moving. You don't want them stopping. So I don't like using these, uh, but if you want to use them, you're more than welcome to. I just don't like to use them that much just because I don't like tying up my piers and trading posts with a ship sitting there trying to unload goods that might take forever for it to unload. And you can do this as many times as you want for as many islands as you want to add it to and just make sure that you are balancing your cargo slots. You're using these options over here. Um, you know, you can upgrade trade, upgrade to a different ship if you want. I can get the Emperor Pedro II here. This would let me use every single slot. Okay, come on. Just there. Yeah, that would let me use all six slots right there. And it's going to pick up and drop off all of that stuff right there. And then you could do the same exact thing. Say I want to drop off a bunch of stuff. Then I want to pick up a bunch of stuff and drop it all off up here. It's all that will work. Just make sure you're using either wait to unload or discard cargo over there. And you can use them in any combination you want to make this trade route work. 
So that is it. That is how a trade route works. You can add as many islands as you want, as many trade ships as you want to it, and just keep going with it. So those are trade routes. That's how they work. How, that's how those buttons work. And that's how you should be setting up your trade route uh, goods allocation and everything and how everything's being managed. Just make sure you're using the buttons. Make sure you're using the load and unload properly over here. It's pretty easy and it's pretty, uh, you, it's pretty come second nature and not a thing you don't even think about once you figure out how that part works. So the next thing let's talk about real quick is active and passive trading. Active trading is you loading up a ship with some random goods that you want to load it up with and taking it somewhere to sell. That's active trading. That's manual active trading. If you have one thing that you just want to get rid of a bunch of real quick, load it all up, take it over, drop it off, and be done. There is also uh, active trading using the trade route system. As you can see right here, I have an active trade route where a cargo ship is going to Madame Kahina, picking up chocolate and cigars, buying it from her, and then dropping it all off at Crown Vaults. Then he goes back to Madame Kahina, buys more, and drops it off. That is an active trade route between myself and a neutral NPC. You can do that with all the neutral NPCs, including Old Nate, Sir Archibald Blake, Eli, the pirates if you have trade agreements with them, Madame Kahina, or Isabella Sarmento, or the Inuit trader in the Passage DLC. So you can set up active trade routes with all of them to either buy goods or sell stuff to them. The active trade, the uh, neutral traders do pay uh, some decent money for several things. Archie likes coal and then he'll buy anything you have. Kahina pays 992 coins for fur coats and also buys anything else. And Harlow pays a ton of money for beer. And also schnapps and rum. And also, again, buys anything you want. All the neutral traders will buy anything you want, anything you have extra. But they have certain things that they'll pay a little bit more for. Like he has the soap and the potatoes. So you can set up active trade routes to all of the neutral NPCs. I do not recommend ever setting up an active trade route with anyone that is an expansion competitive AI. Because as at the moment, like Willie here is selling pocket watches, glass, penny farthings, blah, 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 blah. He, he's going to change that stock eventually. You might be saying, oh, I can go over to him and buy rum really cheap for 24 coins each. Well, eventually he's going to run out of rum to sell you and he's not going to restock it anytime soon. Or he may just randomly decide to stop selling it to you. And then all of a sudden your trade route doesn't work anymore. Never, ever, 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 ever set up an active trade route to an expansion NPC, such as the one star, two star and three star AIs. Don't do it. You will eventually not have access to that good from them for some time and the trade route will not work. What you want to do is if they're selling something you want, send a few trade ships down manually, buy it all manually, and then take it back and unload it. Do it as a one-time purchase, not an active trade route that you create. So that is how you want to do that. The other type of trading there is is the passive trading system. Passive trading is done through the warehouse, through the trading post. And that is all you have to do is click on an item and you're going to tell it to either buy or sell which this means you want it to, you know, make sure you maintain a stock. This is just balances the stock. Say I want it to always have a stock of 160 so that it will sell anything over 160 or buy up to 160. And then sell and buy are exactly what they sound like. I'm telling it to sell anything above 160 or buy anything below 160. Now there is a maximum amount of money that they will buy and that they do per trip so you're not going to make a boatload of money by like saying oh well i'm just going to set all of my steam carriages to sell no one buys them because they're too they're too expensive the ai's only buy and sell up to a certain amount of money i believe it's like maybe two or three thousand coins and that is it that's all they're going to buy so and they're only going to buy a certain amount of things and then that's it so passive trading is a very underwhelming system you're not going to make a lot of money off of it so just be aware of that and 
you know you can sell you can set everything to sell or buy and sell which that you want but it's some things may never get bought and sold so just be aware of that uh let's see let's take a look at the trading post real quick well we already took a look at the trade options there is one more trade option right here and that is the set minimum stock this is for this has nothing to do with your with the passive trading because you manage that right here this is for internal trade routes so let's say i am i have a trade route that is picking up steel beams from stockfisk and taking them over to a new island that i'm setting up a new city i'm building somewhere but i don't want to take all of my steel beams away i want to leave some here i don't i don't want to take it all away you're gonna I, that's where this minimum stock comes into play i want to tell the game that my trade routes can pick up anything they want for this particular good as long as they don't as long as i never go below 50. if i have 60 in stock the trade route's going to come over and it's going to pick up 10 and then take it off if i only have 40 in stock the trade route won't pick up anything because I'm below the minimum stock. So these are good for your internal trade routes and making sure that you do not ever go below a certain amount. What it's really helpful for like uh, good for consumer goods, say that you have, say all of your beer is being produced on one island full of workers, but you need to send some beer to another island to also for also for some workers. Set the minimum stock to whatever you want it to be set at, and then your trade route will come and pick up beer to go to the other island, but it won't ever run you out of beer on that island, right, on your main island that's being produced on. So that is what the minimum stock is for. Now there is one button right here on the trading post that you can click, and that is the statistics button. Go to the statistics screen here, and it's going to take you to the storage tab, which this is just the this is another overview of the storage tab that uh, the storage information that you can see from the warehouse right there. You can also see a, a little more information right here uh, that is really nice. You can see the purchase price, so you can see how much it would cost if you set up a buy order for something. So if I set up a buy order for gramophones. It's going to cost me 27,000 per gramophone. If I want to sell gramophones, the AI will pay 11,000 for gramophones. Now this does count for both um, This is for when uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought right there. This is for when you do take stuff over and sell it directly to the AI. But remember that some of the AIs pay a little extra. You can see soap right here only says 96, but e, but Eli pays like I think in my game it's like 384, 392. He pays a lot more for it. So this is the average price that the AI will pay, but then some of the AIs do pay a little extra for it. Like Madame Kahina pays 992 for fur coats. So that is what these figures right here mean. Over here, under all goods, is where you can see how much your trades are costing you and how much you're making. So you can see I'm, I'm actually, uh, it's actually costing me quite a bit of money in passive trades. I'm not making any money. And it shows you the last, I, I don't really even know how far back it goes. Like this one right here goes back uh, 117, 113 minutes. And you can get a look and see what all of your most recent trades have cost you. Willie sold me some canned food, a beer, and 11 coal for 9,878. Uh, he sold me some beer and coal for 9,990. So this right here shows you all of your passive trades and how much money you have either made or how much it has cost you. And you can look at that for each island right here. If there is no passive trade happening, then it's not available. The other button right here is the trade routes button. Let's go back to our main one where you can see all of your trade routes and how much has been picked up and dropped off for all of your trade routes. You see like the furs right here, I have had all, this is how much fur has been dropped off in the last, what, 116 minutes, uh, almost, what, two hours? So in the last two hours, roughly, I've had this much fur 
dropped off. So that is the trade routes menu right there. The other button right here is the stock over time. This is just a graph that monitors how much stock of, of an item has come in or gone out. Uh, here's a good one right here because you can see that we were good, doing really good and then we dropped down and went up. This is for you number crunchers out there that want to man to monitor your stock and everything and see how you're doing and see if, you're, if there's any major lumps or anything happening in there. So that is it. That is everything about trade, everything you need to know about where you can find the information about trade, passive trade. Uh, there is one thing that is not available that several people have asked me about before, and there is no way to see how much money you are making from active trades. So for instance, that trade route right here from Adam Kahina, where I'm buying all of this stuff, there is nowhere that I can look and see just at a glance how much that is costing me. I actually have to figure this up manually. I have to go to Madame Kahina, see how much this costs, total it up myself, and figure out how much that trade route costs for me to be going and buying that stuff every time. You cannot find that in the game. I have been asked that several times, and unfortunately there is not a way to see how much active trades are costing you when you're buying goods from the AI. But that is it. That is trade routes and trade in general and how all that works and goes together. If you have questions, if there's something I didn't quite cover too well, ask me in the comments below um, and I will respond and we can clarify anything you have questions on or something I might not have covered that you still have, still have questions on and it's unclear to you. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care.